All right, guys, True Crime King back. So, uh, I'm sure everybody has seen the press conference. Uh, they didn't really give too much information, but they did give a little bit. So, they found not a Hyundai Elantra. They found the Hyundai Elantra that they were looking for. Okay? And... Another thing, okay, so remember they were going to clean up, you know, and I, and, my, and I talked about it in my last video. I said, eh, maybe the jury would want to see that exactly how it was. Well, they, a, court order, a court order came down and they halted the cleaning process. So maybe they are going to preserve it now. But, uh, yeah, what I'm going to play you is... You know, just they're going to talk about the highlights of of the press conference because other than what I just mentioned, there really wasn't. I mean, they can't really talk about anything until he's extradited back to Idaho, which could take a while. And yeah, so we just have to be patient and wait. But yeah, we'll see what they talk about. Here we go face of the suspect in the Idaho student murders. As investigators say, justice will be found and the community safe. A 28-year-old criminology student in Pennsylvania arrested for the quadruple stabbing death of four University of Idaho students. Now remember, and they did ask a question, is the community safe? Uh, you know, so the chief really uh, was vague on that answer. So, it, we don't know, we still don't know if there was another person involved. So, but we do know this guy definitely was involved, okay? But there are, there could be another person out there. Uh, apparently when he was arrested, he said uh, something to the effect of, uh, did, did you get the other person or so, something like that? But he was implying that there was someone else. Good evening or afternoon. Good evening to you now. I think it's afternoon for where most of our audience is joining from. J.B. Buno here with you live on WFLA now. We're not going anywhere. We're going to be breaking down what we have learned. And if you're, you know, having a little bit of a moment of an eye roll, it's for good reason. It's because investigators and the police chief, that being James Fry, he cannot divulge information that would compromise the ongoing investigation and, of course, the legal due process that is now to follow. With the yeah, that's why I didn't, I didn't play the whole press conference because it was just them, you know, patting themselves on the back for making an arrest and they really didn't give any information that out that would be, you know, important or you know, worth me talking about. The arrest of 28-year-old Brian Christopher Koberger, a PhD student at Washington State University studying criminology, had a Master of Arts in Criminal Justice from DeSales University in Pennsylvania in May of 2022. We're going to go over everything that we learned, everything that we didn't, and of course, the latter is more substantial. Let's bring in my colleague, oh, excuse me, uh, actually, Jennifer Koffendoffer, that's the correct super there on the right side of your screen. Jennifer Koffendoffer, retired FBI agent joint. Koffendoffer, that's a good, I like that name, Koffendoffer. Bring us back here on stream. Jennifer, I'm going to go over my takeaways here, but let's start with you, your chief takeaways as we start to get into the hashtag HJB hey and hashtag hey Jennifer questions and comments. Well, I think the biggest one uh, was the fact that by legal court order, by court order, that that is why they stopped uh, the uh, cleanup of the crime scene. I thought. Yeah, see, that's one of the things I just told you. That's one of the only things that they told us. I find that to be very interesting. Um, uh, I could only think uh, that that would have to do with the fact that now that they have a suspect in custody, and as the prosecution continues. The jury's gonna want to see that, right? Or, you know, now we're in the prosecution stage. Sometimes a court will allow jurors to actually go back to a crime scene and go look at it. And I'm wondering if since now we're in the court's venue, because we had a 
affidavits. Yeah, because that could, that could be really damning, you know, if there's blood all over the walls and, and on, on the ceiling from him, you know, going like this and, and the blood flying everywhere. If the jurors see that, I mean, that's not going to be good for Mr. Koppendoffer. You know, this clown, this coward, this piece of crap, this bird-nosed looking, Ted Bundy looking, shithead. And I wish I could get five minutes alone with this dude. I, I would, mm. uh, uh, Affidavit signed. We had a court sign off on it. That's the only thing I could think of as to why this has been court ordered. That really stuck out to me. Do you think the crime scene might have been preserved enough to a point where they're halting things and saying, look, there might be more useful to us going forward here. Let's not clean this up and make this, uh, you know, tidy once again, given what has transpired with the arrest of Brian Koberger. Yeah, I mean, this tells me that exactly his words, I think, a legal request by the court. That's the words I wrote down. Legal request by the court. The court is the judge. That's what we mean in our vernacular. And why is the court ordering that other than if they could foresee that being a request by a defense attorney? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, if I was a juror for this trial, I would ask to go see the actual murder scene and what it looks like, you know? Because that's, that's evidence. And that's, that tells the whole picture of what happened, you know? And how brutal it was. So, and that would be really good for the prosecution. Um, that he would want, or, or a prosecutor even. Uh, but it, it seemed odd that there was a legal request by the court. So I'm, I'm a little bit... I don't think it's odd at all. Curious about that. I have various notes, uh, as I do during press conferences. I just scribble as many notes as possible trying to keep up with what we're learning. Uh, let me just first start with... That's what I did. I, I took some notes, but there wasn't much to write down about this press conference. What everybody else was saying on YouTube Live, hello to our YouTube Live, Facebook Live audience, WFLA.com. Hello to those joining us on Twitter as well. Uh, look... There was just overall a, a, a look of relief on, uh, on the face of Police Chief James Fry and, and a bit of a, of a, of a smile. Uh, not, not a you know, ear to ear smile, but a smile enough where you can just see that there is tremendous relief on his face, knowing that he can stand there with confidence and say that the community is safe. Some of the quotes here, justice will be found and that we have a clear, we have received a clear picture over time, but also saying here in my, in my notes, the work is not done. A couple of notes that I have that I found w w was particularly interesting. Uh, of course, learning. And, you know, at least these guys are getting paid. Remember, I'm not getting paid anything. I'm doing this just because I want to do this. I mean, if you, if anybody wants to help out the channel so, so I can do more videos, you know, uh, go, the link's in the description on how to help out. But that, I would really appreciate it. I mean, look, we know that the arrest David, uh, the arrest affidavit is going to come out, and that is going to be really what people are looking for, the treasure trove of information as to how they went from, and really what felt like 24 hours, how, how they went from talking about cleaning up the crime scene in the last PIO update, the last YouTube update that we got from Moscow yesterday, all of a sudden to today, everything forming in really a matter of hours. I mean, talk about a massive turn of events. So the arrest affidavit might paint the picture as to how things went so quickly. And it really makes you wonder if there was one massive break in this case, something massive that led police to, again, Albrightsville, Pennsylvania is the town that is in Monroe County, northeastern uh, PA, not too far away from the tri-state area. Yeah, I mean, this came out of left field man nobody was talking about this nobody okay so they must have got a really good tip or the fbi was or you know found something 
but yeah, they did keep their information real close to the vest, you know. Nobody even had a clue about this guy. You know, so. And I'll say it again. All the psychics were wrong, okay? Nobody was even close. Yeah. Uh, also, as well from my notes, of course, no bond. We know that he's not going to be able to bond out. Uh, and then that they're still looking for the weapon. You also uh, find this interesting, Jennifer, and we talked about this before the stream. I admitted I was not comfortable saying that police had found the Elantra. There's a difference between a Elantra and the Elantra. Police found an Elantra. And while immediately people are going to connect the dots and go from A to Z, really, and say that is the one the police have been looking for, look, we don't even really know its color. All we know is that uh, a Elantra was discovered um, really at the scene of where Brian Coburg was taken into custody. Okay. So they were looking for an Elantra. They found this guy with an Elantra. And then they arrest this guy and charge him with four counts of first-degree murder. I would say that's the Elantra, right? <laughs> I, I mean, what other Elantra are you looking for, you know? So whether or not it is the Elantra, look, that is going to become more clear over time. But not having the murder weapon, but maybe potentially having the vehicle, these are just some of the little nuggets that we were able to learn from this press conference. Yeah, but that would... They might not ever find the murder weapon, you know, but they must, they have something on this guy. They, they, they know he did it, you know, I mean, he's arrested and charged and they wouldn't put the whole case in jeopardy by charging him without any evidence, you know, they have something major on this guy. Well, they're going to lock all that down. And it, there's so much more investigation. And obviously, they believe they can get a conviction without the murder weapon. If they, or they wouldn't have arrested them. ...to do right now. First of all, they've got all that locked down. They're getting search warrants, search warrants for that vehicle, search warrants for his home, search warrants for his parents' home, for friends' homes. They are going to be uh, unmasking every bit of this individual. And listen, all the, with all those search warrants... This guy's screwed. He, I mean, they're going to find everything. They're going to go through everything. I mean, and this guy probably, he, was, he definitely wasn't expected to be, uh, you know, arrested in Pennsylvania. He, he probably thought he was getting away, and he might not even have known they were even thinking about, about him. But I guarantee you, they're going to find more and more evidence going through his houses, going through other cars, whatever he's got, his computers, his phones. His phone's probably going to show that he was right there uh, in, the, you know, at the same time. I mean, he's fucked. Say goodnight, buddy. You coward. You clown. Mr. Koberger's uh, relationships, his friends, his acquaintances, uh, they're going to dive into all of that. Another clue uh, that was given by the chief, did you hear him say when he said two days ago, he said something like two days ago, it's been hard to sit back, it's been sleepless nights. So that gives us our, that gives us our timeline a little bit, JB, right? When, when there was the break. Yeah, so they must have had a good tip two days ago, and then from two days ago. So today is the 30th. So on the 28th, somebody called in a really good tip, and that was it. I mean, they must have followed that tip, and it led into this guy. And boom. I mean, you know, like I said in my previous, one of my previous videos, once the FBI gets involved, I mean... Unless you have left no trace and you are really good, they're going to fucking get you. And they got them. And, and that falls in line with, so that would have been Wednesday. That's when he announced, we're going to do the cleanup, you know, on Friday. 
going to start on Friday. So we want you to know there's going to be activity around. That was when we saw his mood and confidence uh, change. And clearly that's when they were honing in and just putting together their arrest plans, uh, getting that probable cause affidavit written up, getting it to a judge, uh, doing all the imaginations that are required to make an arrest. But yes, so we have to wait until he's extra, extradited back to Idaho and and all that before the probable cause affidavit comes out and and we get all the information, you know, more information. So, you know, that's basically all we know from the press conference, all we learn from the press conference. That's all the information. They found this guy in Elantra, they stopped the cleaning. And uh, those are basically the main points. And that's that's basically what I wanted to talk about in this video. So I'll see you guys either later on if something else comes out or tomorrow. But your true crime king is out.